Let's go ahead and start. Okay, I'm calling the October meeting for the White Lake Board financial review, budget review. We also have a meeting, Brian, and six. Sorry, I'm for the time at 647. Mm -hmm. So the 2024 budget meeting being called to order at 647. So I called to order. I need an approval of the agenda. We have the roll call. Well, it's not listed in here, but I would be happy to have <laughs> someone make an amendment to the agenda to add it. I don't think we ever got that in there. Do we? I don't know. Okay. It sometimes it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you know what? I did copy this from last year. Yeah. Uh, that's why. Okay. That's why. He can just do that with yeah. Go ahead, Jake. Okay. President Jen Schultz. Here. Vice President Richard Here. Treasurer Gwendolyn Newton. Here. Secretary Jake Cadet here, Trustee Karen Mines here, and Trustee Aaron Shovel here, and joined in attendance by Director Rachel Stevenson. And no public. No. Do we want to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance too? We have to add these things to the agenda so I remember. Yeah. Well, it's just because yeah. of this one. That's yeah. okay. The one would be. <laughs> well, she so didn't, didn't remember all either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> And thus, you have a vice president. There you go. <laughs> I got you back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So I guess right to the preliminary 2024 budget review. Well, I we had to change the agenda. Yeah. You are. Either way. I'll make a motion okay. that we <laughs> approve the agenda with the addition of the Pledge of Allegiance and the roll call. Second. I will second that. And all in favor? Aye. Okay. We do not have public tonight. So we will go right into the uh, preliminary po preliminary 2024 budget. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Um, is there any particular area you want to start with? Do we want to just go into right from the top looking at the uh, revenues. Where would you like to? <coughs> Personally, like I think we should just go the, right from the top. Yeah. And you might want to explain to the other people that aren't on the um, budget on the finance committee um, what the budget year is. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so first things first. Uh, the you've got your documents. The this is your main budget. Your budget narrative is basically starting with the expenses, explains nearly every single fund. I think there's maybe one, one or two that's not in there. Um, but almost every single fund gives you an explanation in some way, shape, or form. Uh, this is something that helps me to, um, as I go throughout the year, uh, remember and make sure that certain things are coming out of certain funds um, per your for your orders, for what you would like to see done. Um, per the finance committee suggestions, and they had some great suggestions after reviewing this, as you'll see, it's draft three. Um, <laughs> we well, added at the bottom the not only the 2024 total, but what we did in 2023, mm -hmm. if we did, and was there an increase or a decrease, mm -hmm. or did it stay the same? So those are some very helpful things from the finance committee. That's very helpful. Yeah, this this is great. I mean, mm -hmm. well done to all involved. So I find it a very helpful. Uh, getting back to the main budget. So another helpful finance committee suggestion was to show you the 2022 um, budget uh, as 
you approved it and also as it came out. Uh, and so then you'll see that along with the percentage uh, of the budget that was received and or used. And then we also have the 2023, what you approved for that. And then we have what is current as of October 13th. That I will warn you does not include all uh, per Joe, all of the adjusting entries for September, i.e., prepaid expenses. So there are some accounts that won't be quite as of as of 10 13. So but minor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then again, you know, projected over under budgets, percent and percentage used. And then finally, the proposed 2024 budget is on the very end. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the colors are. <laughs> You were running out of colors. I'm running out of colors. <laughs> so, I think three years, I do agree. Three years is a good view, if you will. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think originally I had taken it out for ease of viewing what we were currently doing, but adding it back in towards the end, I think. It just gives us a good um, reference in what we've spent in the past. So let's take a look at revenues. The, as you'll see from the tax revenue, property taxes, um, that is our anticipated amount, the 1.5, just over 1.5 million. The federal grants, um, and you can see, I kind of based it in 2023, we were at 3,000 in 2020, I'm sorry, 2022, we were at 3,000 in 2023. I went down a bit. I still don't know in regard to federal grants. That's a very specific grant. You can't just put any grant in there. It has to be federal. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure how much more we'll get out of that. So I only did that one for the for 2024 is a thousand. I have a question about that. Yeah. Because we're not hitting, you know, what we ho we're hoping to hit. And that revenue, and I mean, it's a very small amount, but what is the grant that we're receiving today? Do you know? The friends grant? No, I'm sorry, the federal grant. What is the federal grant that we're receiving to, today? Right. So like- Could be 137. Yeah. 15. Oh, I, I have to double check, but I think that has to do with um, the, um, Oh, thank you. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, sure. That's right. Yeah. What federal grant are we looking for? Yeah. All right. And it, it is small, and there's a small possibility for us to get a few more from that. But again, I just want to be more. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, state aid. So we, again, 2022, we received 30, 2023, 31. And I like to keep modest with that. So I mm -hmm. kind of kept it at 29. Mm -hmm. You know, fines, again, same type of deal, um, 46, we went down to 41 this year, so I put it at 38. So, I mean, it could be more. These are, these are our estimates. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate we're going to sell any capital assets. Um, copy your fax revenue, again, maybe just a modest amount more, considering that um, we're already over. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice with percentage received and used, that pink column there next to the 2024, I'm kind of basing a little bit of my decisions off of that. So for only, if I budgeted 500 in 2023, we're only at 42%, then I took it down. Okay. Fines fees, um, lost books, cards, we are up on that. So I did go up on that. Interest. So I took a look at this one. I, I mean, we probably will wind up. I'm estimating with more than 20, but I'm just putting 20 in there. It's just I'm looking at the February, March CDs. We should get just over 13,000. Uh, I know we're going to be investing some more. Um, so I put it at 20, just to mm -hmm. be modest. And if you have any suggestions on that, or you think I should be higher? No, I think that underestimating it, I really don't know what the Fed's going to do. Because, I mean, it could, our interest rates could go. Right. Could go yeah. We think they're going to stay up next year, but we don't know. Right. So I think being conservative on that is a good idea. 
Um, I'm also being modest. I was hopeful last year. Yeah. <laughs> Very hopeful. <laughs> but I'm um, going to be a little bit more modest this year. And that's another conversation um, you'll see as part of staffing. But um, and as part of strategic plan, we'll talk about what that, how that could, how we could get to that number, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Other revenue. Yeah, I'm not anticipating. Like, mainly, I'm that's. I'm going to go with public donations and um, that one. I was much more hopeful last year. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. learning my lesson on that one. So we're going to go down on that one. One question, April. Yeah. So I remember when you came on, you were really, um, oops, like, I remember, would that fall into public donations? It will. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's still on my mind. <laughs> Just, Okay, yeah, friends, you'll see that um, I was able to put in that 40. Very generous of them. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then the fund balance usage, uh, you'll see that's the projected fund balance need. So that's a fun bit. Okay, yeah. so when we met last week, there's a $49,000 difference than what you put mm -hmm. in for this week. Correct. Based on some of our Okay. okay. Stacks the okay. um, ideal lab counter and cabinets. So, thank you. Yep. And where are those listed? They'll be, the, they'll be in under it. each of yeah. their fund number. But fund they'll pull out of yeah. their balance right. by this number, right? Okay. Or that's what we used to pay for. Because we talked about the well, wallet in April for you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we didn't do until so we had. Um, 124 in for 2023. We haven't used any of it and, and don't expect to use any of it. Is that we have? We have used some of it, um, and that is um, it's more listed within the usage of the actual <coughs> fund number as opposed to it hasn't been transferred. So I didn't see that was a question actually, which. I think I brought up in finance committee because my question is, is that I didn't see a budget amendment to move the 2022, the 230,000 over. Um, so my question is, is that something that you need to do just in budget meeting historically? I'm not sure. I did talk to Joe about it and yeah. we kind of looked at the audit, which looks when I turn in the audit information, I just give them a document showing what was used and what was it used on. And then they um, put it into there, what they give to us. So I did see that. And when I look at the 2022 overall numbers, which this is based off of the audit, um, my numbers came out um, fairly close. because they got Maybe we didn't do that this last year. I think before that we, and we often didn't use the fund balance. We, we were very reticent to do that. Um, but we um, would make an amendment to match. Could be, here's the actual uh, that we use of the fund balance and you know, uh, move that up as, as um, to match up for the, as the as revenue side of it there so that those balanced out. So is that um, so, so like the fund balance, I think that last year we agreed that we were going to do the time. That was something that was in the fund balance. Mm -hmm. And the um the drive up. Yeah. So what I take what I spent total for that and then let you know and then add it to the budget amendment list that I have. You guys to Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, does that does that ring? Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember we, where... ca we carry over to the next year what we didn't spend. Yeah. I see that oh. on it. I just wasn't sure what mm -hmm. that was looking like. In the before going to this um, uh, spread or not to put it all funds, um, we had a separate. We had a. Uh, an account that we track that all in, and I think maybe we don't have that now. 
I mean, it can still it can still be, you know, brought up from there. So there, but there was we we were using there was a eight something. Yeah, Joe was eighteen. It's I know I, it was nine eighty four building and improvements, and then Joe kept this year, which is some of the budget amendments we need to do this year. Strategic planning was in that one. Oh yeah, the tiling was in that one, and he said you can't have the strategic planning in building and improvements. Yeah. Yeah. Professional, so that we have to make a budget amendment to move some some of those funds to their appropriate fund number. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think though we need to we it might be that we need to have a um, building in, and improvements sub account that rolls up the building and improvements but is the fund balance use version of that um, so that we've got a as we're looking at it as we go through that we know okay this is you know the um, we're taking from our our fund balance, which you know, we need to do so in a what's the right word? You know, good fiduciary uh, spirit. Agreed. For fund balance expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are sticking with our. <clears throat> Sticking to with the budget and the spirit of the budget, you know, we'll get, we're going to utilize fund uh, balance. We want to do that in a way that is traceable, so we're not you know, spending. Uh, essentially, the fund balance is our future, and um, you know, it it should be toward the uh, capital things. And, yeah. Well when we did this last year, if I had a little list. Yeah, I, I can bring you that list. Mm -hmm. um, as we go through the budget narrative mm -hmm. and some of the larger projects you look at and you decide, yes, you want to move forward with that, then I can put that into <coughs> that kind of, back into that kind of grid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I want to know what you want to do first before I start. <laughs> Um, okay, I will check with Joe on what we can do with that. Okay, you ready to move on? All right, moving on to expenses. The first one is obviously staffing. Um, so if you pull out your staff spreadsheet. We're going to be talking uh, about salary and wage expense um, first. But as you can see, um, that's an estimate of 840000 which covers 837000 Now, if you look at your budget narrative, it gives you a little bit of an explanation on what you're looking at here. Uh, Finance Committee, uh, we had three different um, versions of this that we looked at. Uh, one was either to have a department head uh, for adult, or to have a full-time adult librarian or to have a part-time adult librarian with raising the hours on a current part-time adult librarian and also providing for additional um, overtime hours for the facility specialist in order to accommodate after hours uh, room rentals. So what we came down to is the part-time adult, which we have proposed here. Uh, we currently have 15 part-time employees and 10 full-time, and we want to get closer to equaling the adult and youth departments in what we have for both of them. So that entails a part-time adult librarian, an additional uh, substitute bank of 300 hours, and the Finance Committee is suggesting another 4% raise overall. Um, for circulation, we're asking for an increase of 12 part-time hours, and that's at the highest circulation hourly rate, so that can be spread out um, accordingly as needed. And then we also need to monitor the potential court ruling on minimum wage. Um, if decides that they want to reverse uh, the court of appeals, then we could be facing a page and rate hourly rate 
of $13.30 an hour. Um, and then lastly, uh, again, as I mentioned, I've also budgeted 96 overtime hours for the facility specialist uh, to dedicate to potential after hour rentals. So, questions on just the sale. And you have the 1330 listed in here. What's the basis for the 4%? Social Security was 3.2 this year. It was 8% last year, and we only gave 4% last year. So we're still behind, you know, what, what it's counting for inflation in, yeah. in just that one bellwether. So, yeah, the biggest thing really was just rewarding the current employees mm -hmm. you know, staying. And you know, yeah, of course, with inflation as well. And yeah. Just the macroeconomic environment we're in. I mean, talking to April and Denise previously, one of the big things that came up in exit interviews was just the pay. And I mean, you can drive down to 59 and see McDonald's and Taco yeah. Bell advocating for 18 hours, yeah. 18 dollars an hour with tuition reimbursement, mm -hmm. so, things like that. So. And I can tell you that having just recently, we were looking for a page and our head of CERB does have, you know, we keep applications for a while. And so she went back and called some of them and they, when they heard the amount, which right now it's not that high, it's not the 13, mm -hmm. um, they just said no. Mm -hmm. Just not even, not even interested. So, uh, I, in my opinion, regardless of the uh, the court, I think we need to start to get closer for our mm -hmm. from I agree. Mm -hmm. So I agree. So we should get there. Yeah. <coughs> you know, we had talked about this before in the finance committee that you know, at the library we do have some advantages. Mm -hmm. You know, over McDonald's and <laughs> and some of the local, you know, commercial businesses. You know, just the even just the hours. But That's a great place. It, but we but we need to pay people to be willing to come in here. So that is the budget's a narrative. I had one question. So, Rich, does that, under, does that answer your question too about the uh, increase put across the board? Yeah, okay. yeah. Just you know, mm -hmm. there's a number with what where did it come from? Yeah. Well, the, the, the logic you know. So then, April, there's the projected annual wages 2024 with additional hours and or staff at 837 634 correct and we've got 840 mm -hmm. in the budget was that just rounding or yes. padding or whatever That's there rounding. okay all righty yeah. i just want to make sure i understood right, because, the difference because the numbers didn't add up to me yeah. Sure it okay yeah up. it's just much easier to do that okay nope. easier to follow I'm trying to see the little last dollars and things. I know one of the things that came up with strategic planning is that we may need more people in the future. Uh, you know, we do have limited income, mm -hmm. and we don't really have a choice about our limited income. So um, we're working. You know, we worked with April and talked about what the best ways to um, to use the staff that we have today, which are excellent. Um, and not um, actually, like we had talked about, instead of uh, um, what was the new, what's the new person that we were looking at doing? Um, adult librarian, right? Um, originally, that we was looking at doing, we were looking at doing the, either uh, head of adult uh, head or of the full time or part time. I will say, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard. We we had a very, we just finally, and I don't want to even. Jinx it. <laughs> um, hired a part time librarian to replace uh, someone that just left in August, uh, but it's taken that long to get someone. Right. So hopefully, um, it's just, it is hard to get part time. So, fingers crossed um, that we get someone and they stick around. Uh, and uh, that's very hard to get. Yeah. But, um, no, because we do have a limited budget. And we don't have we don't have a big budget. We need to make sure that we don't, um, you know, hire so many people that we can't sustain it. Right, and that's part of the other issue. Yeah, so it really is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, 
payroll taxes are pretty straightforward. Uh, employee benefit expense. So uh, as you can see, that one is obviously going down. I can tell you about that one. What we did this year with that is we, in addition to our priority POS, we added a priority HMO, uh, which is actually a nice one with Southeast Michigan Partners. So it's not quite the traditional HMO that you're thinking of. It's actually you don't have to get pre-approval, which is really nice. And, and all the two of the current qualified staff have chosen that HMO. Um, there was also, we put in a rise in employee contribution if staff chose the POS. Um, I did also budget for a potential life change of one of our full-time staff members, uh, resulting in that person needing to be added to the health insurance and their spouse. They currently are not on health insurance, but they may, uh, okay. they may need to, so I wanted to make sure we were prepped for that. So that may or may not happen, but we may or may not need to have to Okay, great. Uh, explanation on that. All right. Uh, obviously, workers' compensation insurance, uh, that went down a little bit. We do get a refund on that each year. Oh, yep. Um, but yeah, that's it for personnel. Any questions on the personnel spreadsheet? On the employee benefit expense, why was it so much under budget? So what's that? The employee benefit expense this year. So negative 63. Um, lack of people. Yeah. Else on that? I'd say the tuition reimbursement. I did want to touch upon that. Um, right now, uh, one credit at Wayne State University, just one credit, and each credit is three credits. Each class is three credits. Is, so the one credit is eight hundred eighty-five dollars and two cents. <laughs> is that two cents? Um, I'm just not sure if this one is worth offering, unless we either a go up a little bit or we don't offer. I'm not sure what your feelings are on this one. I know you do want to help. You know, I would say yeah. if staff have an interest and want to take a class or two, then bring it to the board, and maybe we can fund it another way rather than just keep putting money aside and pulling it back. You may, like Mallory or a newer person that just got their single degree and are looking to get their master's may want to take a few classes and I would like to help them do that. You know, we, you know, we can do that with friend, the friends donation. We could start a fund and ask people to contribute if they want to for furthering education for the st staff. You know, there's a lot of different ways we could uh, tackle it. I'd like to know what other libraries in the district are doing. Okay. Are they doing, are they doing college reimbursement? And I can also check and see if the friends are interested in mm -hmm. maybe starting something. Would that tuition reimbursement only cover like academic coursework or what, what if there's like a professional training seminar or something? Mm -hmm. there's a it separate... could be whatever. It could be newspaper books. I mean, mm -hmm. so if we wanted to keep it at the 600 and then just maybe it's enough to cover some books, it's another option. Mm -hmm. But how are we using the best, you know? It hasn't been. Yeah. It hasn't been. Mm -hmm. not, not well every year. Every year it's been. Have you ever seen? Tuition. I remember a class, uh, not a college class, but like what you said, Jake. Mm -hmm. I remember that, but that's all. Yeah. So I can leave it at zeros now. I can do a little research and come back. Let's just leave it at zero for now. Yeah. And if someone expresses an interest, yeah. we'll pick it up. Think about like, it. like a future note too is if you decide to have it cover books and materials, I think it ought to be called something other than tuition, academic services and tuition reimbursement, something like that. Um, that way it covers because tuition has a very strict definition okay. in higher education. Sure. I know what other other libraries are doing and what they're calling it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any so moving on next is going to be supplies. Supplies. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. So before before we move on, anybody have any questions about the additional staff or what we're doing with with employees? Oh, you mean the uh, 
Just checking before we. The one part time and the additional. No. Correct. Very clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, supplies. So, um, office supplies, real basic, you know, your daily items. Uh, based on what I've seen and what our usage is, it was appropriate to go down a little bit. Sure. Collection supplies, that one is doing a slight increase because we need to get a couple more book carts. And book carts, let me tell you, are not cheap. <laughs> yep. Right. They don't last as long as you expect them to. Yeah. Um, computer supplies. So you're going to see a big difference in this one. Um, last year, I had actually bought the computer. Yeah. Um, I had some hardware things in there, and Joe said, "You know what? Really, um, anything over a thousand should come out of 983 equipment." And so that's why you're seeing such a half drop on computer supplies because this is mainly going to be now software updates uh, and other just IT small IT things and projects. Remember, we talked about that last year about what the point of the capitalization right. uh, is. And I think so we were that. thinking like a computer now is more of a supply than a, <laughs> and Joe disagrees. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, repairs and maintenance supplies. So just bumping that up a little bit to any uh, additional landscaping or replacing or improving uh, that we might need, but so far that seemed to serve us well. We're kind of really on target with, with that um, fund. Ideal Lab fund. Right, here's a fun one because you know, we only had $500 this year. I can tell you, having just purchased some things, that we probably might even exceed the 500 this year. Um, but supply costs, again, Every month, you notice we put out a something each month for people to come in and use. So your arts and crafts, uh, you know, games, puzzles. Uh, this is going to now need to replace filament. So mm -hmm. for the new 3D printer and our 3D printer pens, of course, we will, there will be a small charge for people who wanting to print um, their 3D things or <coughs> to use those pens in a certain amount mm -hmm. um, free first. I don't know if you that, but those very, very minimal, minimal costs on that one. So. We will need to add money for that. Um, other replacement materials you see, cricket, laminator, any other technology. And we want to add a steam kit collection there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are kits, you know, that are kids love them, coding, space, anatomy, fossils, just to name a start. They run about $100 a kit, so $500 would be a great start for that. So that's why I think. I would have thought that was much larger anyway. So I, I'm like, I'm amazed at how little has been spent. <laughs> yeah, and that's like I said, that's gonna, mm -hmm. gonna see that go up probably next month. Yeah, because how much was the the printer? It won't be in that one. Oh, it's okay. not gonna come out, it doesn't come out of ideal F one because it's gotta come out of the Oh, okay. So this has been just the stuff needed right. for the equipment that's right. in there. And for anything else. In okay. Room. And some of that comes back because when you use the laminator, you buy a laminator sheet, yep. you know, so some of it. Yep. And like you said, with the um, pens and stuff, that would. Is that revenue from the idea lab with 3D printer included in here? <laughs> that. That up. I just I'm talked joking. to Joe because okay. I asked, would he be able to add in? And you'll probably, if you, um, in the 2024, would he be able to add in a fund or would I just have to put it in something else? And he can add in a fund number that is ideal at revenue. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. Yeah. At a minimum, it would be easy, interesting to see how that goes up or down. Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and also, um, on the equipment side, if it would seem to make sense to also track what's the equipment expense for Idea Lab versus, you know, the, you know the general purpose, you know, computers and such. Um, sanitizing supplies, I took that if I have because we didn't really, haven't really used too much of that. It's, it's a different time than it was mm -hmm. a couple yeah. years ago. 
Okay, so any questions on the, on the supply end of mm -hmm. Moving on to services and charges, um, professional and contracted services. Uh, this is going up and I can explain why. Um, we do have recurring fees uh, for this account and you can see their average as well as miscellaneous expenses, attorney fees. Uh, we will need those policy manuals looked at and each of those costs around $1,200. Uh, we did receive notice that our online program calendar, uh, the NERP Demco, is ceasing operations. Uh, so they are graciously <laughs> with pay, uh, allowing us to continue for what we would say we would like about five months worth um, to get in place something new. Um, there's some a couple out there that we are looking at, um, and so I had to put in some funding for that. Expensive, a little more expensive than I originally thought. Um, so that's that. I would also like to get a virtual tour done of our building. This is similar, I'm um, sure you've seen when you go into certain websites like uh, Google 360, mm -hmm. um, similar to that. Um, this is a company called Evil View that I really like what they're doing. And they are actually partner with Culture City, which is right below that, and I'll talk about that. But these tours are great. They provide accessibility views. And I, I don't just mean for uh, public patrons that are on the spectrum, but it also provides uh, for patrons who are differently abled. They're able to see, you know, what is it going to be like when I go to this building? How, how am I going to navigate my way around? Uh, so that's another great way for using it. Uh, so that's, that's that, 4,000 for that. And coupled with this, I would add in Culture City. Um, this is a great partner. They, it's a, they provide venues such as ours. Um, uh, it's not just libraries. You'll see Culture City in, um, I don't know, I can't remember if it's Ford Field or if it's other big things like, big venues like that, but they train staff. They provide training for your staff. They, um, they give you a certification. Staff have to go through testing. Um, about twice a year to run to recognize guests with sensory needs. Uh, and then they provide accommodations for those guests with autism, dementia, PTSD. These include sensory bags, uh, which include uh, fidget items, noise canceling headphones, verbal cue cards, which can be used with, if you have a patron who is nonverbal, you can use this cue card to point to things that they might need or want. So it really helps that oh, situation. I have a lot of experience with Culture City, um, and I do highly recommend it. Um, and weighted lap pads, which are for kids calming, you know, mm -hmm. kids that are just wonderful, fantastic. So um, that's the increase in the reason for that. And dogs. And a dog. Mm -hmm. No, and dogs. Oh, and dogs. Yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> my dog prefers a pumpkin coat. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, TLN services. So the biggest uh, change with TLN services, you're going to say, well, you had it at 55, why is it going on at 54, but yet you're moving money? <laughs> um, that's because it hasn't been, it's been, I think, a little overestimated over the years. Um, so I was able to not only put uh, other costs in there, but take it down a thousand. Um, as the same goes. Um, in 2024, I want to move the overdrive annual participation fee to TLN, which is around 6,000. This will keep the service charges for overdrive in a service fund and allow the actual overdrive capital uh, fund to be strictly content. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, when I did it last year and I I, I said to Amy, I said, okay, you have X amount of Spanish. Well, I thought I had that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what is that administrative fee? The administrative fee? It's just under 6000 So that will be the, the extra that we'll have this year to spend on the content. Right. Um, okay. Computer services, mm -hmm. pretty standard. Uh, Little bit of an increase for that. So we've got our we've got our consultant. Really appreciate the work he does. Our hotspots. 
of licenses and other anticipated costs. Is Microtex, uh, I thought his name was Dave. Mike. 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 I knew it was short. Okay. All right. That's what I thought. Okay. Hey, advertising and promotion. Again, you've got some recurring costs here. Um, in addition to the strategic plan, uh, to address the strategic plan, I'm suggesting to continue to host chamber and business association events as, as requested, which means each one of them, each you know, one a year. Um, budgeting for a mobile app, including cost and implementation fees. So, April, is that the difference in from what we met last right. week? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It did go up. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, constant contact, our print newsletter, website hosting, the new types of swag, and uh, boosting a coach, occasional social media posts we'd like to boost to get a little bit more uh, a little more people seeing them, and then mobile app cost and implementation estimate is around ten thousand. Mm -hmm. I think the mobile app will be really helpful too. Mm -hmm. I still wonder what TLN is is doing because this is this is a <coughs> need that is not you know only us, and it seems like so agreed, Rich. You know, uh, you know that. All the other libraries, you need the same thing, or you know, right. unless they already have. Um, TLN is matched up with TLCCO, which is CAR, which is our ILS. Mm -hmm. So they have one. Um, I it looks interesting. I still need to do a vendor demo with them, but they have a couple of options where you could a patron could even have it on their phone. They could walk up, they could grab a book, and actually check it out. Through the app themselves, which <laughs> <laughs> would be fabulous. I mean, that's just that's just TLC Go, and I think what's nice about what's it, it again, called TLC TLC Go, G O T L C, yeah T L C. Um, so it's again, obviously, we'll take time to look at that. I've got the name of already about three different vendors, but um, this yeah, makes this awesome. says it, this doesn't give you an idea that it's. Related to libraries. Yeah, it is. It says watch new episodes the day after they air. No. TLC. It's not the same that's TLC. Orange. That's orange. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what am I looking for? The Library Corporation, probably. TLC Go. Well, if you play, type in TLC Go, it's... Like HBO Go. Right. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to scroll way down until you're on the third or fourth page of the Library Network. Comes up with living. It's probably not under the library network. It's probably done by TLC, the library corporation. Yeah, it's a library corporation. So I just really sort of wanted to look at it. You can go tlcdelivers.com. I was looking under Google. Oh, what? Um, Google, you know, Play Store. Because that's where you normally look oh, for an app, right? Mm -hmm. Of course I did. Yeah. Well, we can look at that later. Mm -hmm. But I was really curious because, you know, I mean, I, I'm with you, Rich. I'm like, why isn't this something that um, TLC's? Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's a. Uh, common, right, you know, right, that we're not just using not, not, not right. that it would be free, yeah, there, right, but, but, um, but consistency and support. And... I want to look at that mm -hmm. just for sure. Okay, that's yeah, I mean, I walk up with my phone because I, you know, I had my, I have my card on my phone. So I use my phone all the time to check things out. But it'd be great to be able to do it through an app. So bank charges and fees. Uh, our flag star is eighty dollars. This rate is good through December thirty first, twenty twenty four. Is it, it, it? Was it for two years? I thought it was only a year. I looked it up. Thank but you. You said that I looked it up. Like, no, because I, I need to know. Oh, or like you said, going to expire this year, but they they guaranteed that for two years. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Chase also has a fee of 95, uh, but again, if we maintain that average beginning day balance of 100,000 or more um, in combination of linked. 
Right, right. and we're not saying anything for that now because we have we have a CD with them. So I didn't feel there was any necessity. It wasn't necessary to change that. Mm -hmm. Dues and subscriptions, um, just a small increase on that. Some of the places have increased their fees. Obviously, they do that. <laughs> uh, your standard, your chamber, uh, Sherman, which is HR, MLC, uh, MLA, ALA, <laughs> all the all the all the uh, fun acronyms, and Optimus. So, not much of a, not too much. Of a so we have to we pay like lakes, but we don't pay one for here in Valley. You mean Highland White Lakes Business yeah. Association? Yes. Um, is Highland White Lakes yeah. Business Association? You had an exit hosting. Oh, that's the hosting part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just like oh, yeah. geez, how come we have to pay lakes? <laughs> we don't say Highland. Okay. All right. That might not. They're not that expensive. That might not. Thank you. Uh, postage, the kind of most significant aspect of this is the newsletter three times a year. Um, yeah, again, one of those things where I was able to increase, even though there was a slight increase. It was a very slight increase, so it wasn't it wasn't that necessary. And postage wise, we're doing pretty good. So I felt we could go down. Okay. If you think that I should not, let me know. We, we don't. We don't have any millages next year, right? It's yeah. just the officers. Okay. Um, considered using our stamps.com. Yeah. can talk experience with this. Well, that'd be interesting, Rich. Because I was reading just about that the other day. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's a convenience factor to it too. Telephone. All right, next page, telephone. Uh, cost on the account, you know, that's showing you what we're basically paying for um, in 2024. I would like to add a cell phone for our administrative marketing position. Um, in addition to effectively managing social media, uh, there are a number of social media platforms that require um, a, a more of a phone device-based management. Uh, this will also include, again, more effective communication, access to drive resources during community outreach events, real-time posting from events, 24-7 uh, login access, reliable internet access if, uh, if you have to work from home, display QR codes, read QR codes, record video, which is the largest issue here. It's not appropriate for to ask IPL staff member to use their own IT device or phone for these types of work purposes. Um, I'm not sure how they're paying for their phone and if there's anything extra use that they're using it for. I don't think that's right. But one of the largest things we're doing now is recording video for future video-based projects, such as the drive-up window and that author video we just did. Um, so that's one of the largest reasons. Mm -hmm. That would be an additional $25 a month. Yeah. Six. We're doing um, video. Finding sense to consider a video camera. Good, but it's a lot easier to. Um, so far, we have found to just with the devices that we're using and the software that we're using, we can just easily send it mm -hmm. much quicker. Um, it may be more expensive to. Grab a phone. I don't. Or not a phone. Maybe more expensive to grab a video camera. Uh, it might be more than the overall cost for the year of the phone, but I can look at that. I think it would almost certainly be more expensive. I just I just looked at regular digital cameras just for a family member, and the costs for those physical devices, other than, because of the prevalence of phones, has gone way up. Whereas phones are basically amortized by the provider, and you have. 
unlike with the video camera, where we have to buy the extended warranty. The phone is usually covered, the service is usually covered by the provider. So it's generally, I think it's more cost effective to use a mobile device. So one of the things that, <clears throat> as we add phones that we haven't probably done, is um, we probably need to have policy in phones. Um, and, and that you some what kind of applications go on? Yeah, I'm because that you know, working in a corporation like you know we've worked in, um, it's very very limited in what you can do, and we have not we've not described that for our employees. And they really are should be used yeah. for business only. Yeah, acceptable use policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Yeah. Acceptably unacceptable use policy. Absolutely. Yeah, and just yeah. a thought. I know, like being a public institution with FOIA and all that, yeah. you know, yeah. phones are going to be subject to that. Absolutely, so. should not be mm -hmm. no personal mm -hmm. information on that phone. And that's another reason why last year I suggested the phones originally is because of the whole FOIA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. year. Right, you did, uh, but we yeah. but we didn't take that next step. Yeah. We talked. We we talked about it briefly. I think that that was. We didn't do it's, it. It's a well. It's, there's a lot of the policy. Right. Side of the world. But it's important. Um, but because yeah. we're adding more and more staff to phones, mm -hmm. everybody needs to understand that they're, they're for business use only. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and another thing, not just with the video, but it's there's a lot more social media apps and more social media different types of social media that are coming out that are much more. Um, they're not friendly to say laptops or tablets. They're really friendly to phone devices. Mm -hmm. so that's an Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Devices, right? Instagram. Snapchat. Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. okay. And that's a good way to reach our teens. Is um, mm -hmm. uh, mileage reimbursement uh, cost. Currently, I could only get the 2023 as of. Just the most recently, I keep looking for the 2024 to see if it's going to go up. Uh, PLA, Public Library Association conferences in Columbus, Ohio this year. Uh, round trip cost for this will be around $350. Uh, extra amount of this fund will help with outreach and other professional development opportunities in addition to the PLA. Mm -hmm. All right, bigger ones, utilities, <laughs> <laughs> electricity. Um, okay, so in 2023 for electricity, we budgeted for an 18% increase. From 2022. Total between January and August is running down a seven and a half percent increase. Um, and taking some different tolls for 2024, I'm suggesting a another two and a half percent increase to 10 percent. Gas, so far there hasn't been much change between the cost of gas in 2022 and 2024. Three, therefore, I'm suggesting a modest two and a half percent increase. Water. Water. <laughs> a less modest water. increase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in, in modest. I mean, yeah. Yeah, very very modest. Modest. <laughs> Let's just jump right into the water. Um, <laughs> it's a little a, chilly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna double it. I mean, yeah. I it, and you know what's funny, and Jen saw this today too, because I just got the most recent water bill, which I had to laugh, was just a little over two thousand. Yeah. For the summer. Uh -huh. Like the summer from July. When you would have like here. watered and yeah. everything else. And yeah. one was like an estimate, it was a zero. And then sure enough, here comes the letter from the township. They have to look at the meter again because there's they're having trouble with meter reading. I'm not the only one. Okay. Like, yeah. So I don't I called over there and I said, Yeah, I got my bill in front of me. She said, Oh yeah, that's not she goes, Go ahead and pay it, but that's that's a down payment. Next to, yeah. Go ahead, there you go. We're gonna charge you some. <laughs> yeah, so next time that's gonna be more. So yeah, I, oh my god. Um sewer, cost for sewer have increased by two percent. Um, so we'll just mm -hmm. we'll throw three percent. <coughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna hear some maintenance services. Um, so made some connections um, and some very nice people were able to get me and save us quite a lot of money on lawn care this year. <laughs> um, big thank you to them. So the recurring costs overall were not as high as anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, incidentals ran around $5,000 uh, and $2,000 towards service charges for fob access doors, which I will get to when I get to 984, but uh, I need to put that service charge in there because that's where it would go fund-wise. 
Um, so actually, all that being said, it's still a decrease. Over at, from actual mm -hmm. versus. Yeah, from last year. Last year, I asked for the maintenance difference. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Which is fabulous. Okay. Um, okay, rentals and lease, no change there. Okay. Property insurance, just a small increase. Um, you can see why last year was 13.7. It's a trend, 2%, uh, looking at potential cost of 13.90. And the refund varies. I, I, you know, I can't, if it, 2022 is 7.99, just recently it was 14.39. So I, it could go, <laughs> could go down, could go up. Mm -hmm. I don't really rely on yeah. the refund. It's just a little prize. <laughs> a little happy, happy service. Trainings and conferences, um, no change to this because um, even though even though we have PLA, PLA is paid for now. It's paid for out of this budget. Oh, okay. okay. The oh, hotel, okay. the stay is what is what's paid for out of 2024. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So um, that's what you see there. And um, I did send that. You'll see that I did send that to you to take a look at because it is so close. So, but I would need to know because I was, that would change okay. that number. Um, if you haven't done a large conference like that, um, PLA is fantastic. PLA is fantastic. <laughs> I wonder what it's going to do to the OLC conference, though, considering they're both in the same state. OLC is typically huge, and who knows now. What's OLC? Ohio Library Consortium. Oh, yeah. Should have gone with Ohio to start yeah. my brain, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, they have the biggest state conference, other than number. other than I think Texas is the next biggest. Wow. So, or the biggest. Yeah. Why is second biggest? Yeah, it's a wonderful conference. It's very, very inspiring, and we learn a lot of real new things to come back with. This is April third or fifth. Okay, adult programming. Um, with adult programming, you're going to see no change, but that's not for uh, when I talk to staff who, you know, some of these are their funds and what they're what they're working with. And what I get from the adult staff is, you know, with the friends being so generous, a lot of that can come from. So the, usually a concert series we would ask the friends to pay for, or some of our larger, you know, if we bring in an author or something like that. That's part of what the wish list would be for. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why there was no change in adult programming. <coughs> Young adult programming, um, again, just a small bump to address strategic plan uh, requests for more and varied programs. And children's programming. Okay, now here's where <laughs> I need you to really kind of look at this and think about what you want to do. So again, just a small bump to um, thousand to bring in you know more varied programs uh two thousand dollars toward the start of an early literacy backpack collection um and then i have had a number of requests for the dolly parton imagination library yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes um this has been interesting um, so you've had more than one page for this yes for this okay. yes um, when I went to the this farm event, um, it came up a number of times, and yeah, mainly because you this farm this farm event had obviously not just White Lake residents, it had commerce, it had some other ones, and commerce does it, and so there was some different conversations. But commerce was new at doing this, right? They've been done it for two years. Okay. Um, so my thought on it, you can see my thought on it is if you read it, is to start with um, fifteen thousand. Again, it's it's giving, it's sending books by mail. Patrons sign up for this. They would know it's cut, it's they would know we're the ones funding that. Mm -hmm. We're not picking out the books. Um, it just goes, it's sent straight to their home. Um, I'm saying around 500 kids from age birth to five. Let's say you got a four-year-old signed up for it, so they would get it for 12 months. Until they turn, you know, until they turn five, mm -hmm. or you get a baby that's just born, then they're going to get it the whole five years. So you've got right. kids that would be coming on it, coming off it, coming on it, coming out. At some point, you're going to have an average. Is, yeah. my, is my guess. Um, but I don't know what that's going to look like. 
So. There's not a lot of libraries that are doing it. Um, Commerce is one of the only ones that is funding it purely. So 12 books, a, 12 books a year. Right. So 500. Basically, year. we're yeah. paying postage is what we're paying. Yeah, if you yes. look, I looked at their website the other day after we talked about this in mm -hmm. um, April, and um, I think they're sending out like 2 million books a year. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it was two million. I, I could be wrong, but the books I thought were all very age appropriate and one and um, it's been around for quite a while. Yeah. 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 And the books are adorable. Many of them, you know, are, are classics and um, you know, and obviously they're not. There's there's nothing political in nature in any of these books. They're they're all just little kids' books. And they're really cute. And, you know, like one year olds get the very high of a cat and pillow, you know, as one of the books. And we've gotten a lot in for friends. So we've sold them a thing. And if you've ever seen them, um, you have your basic um, paperback book, but then it folds in the cover. And on the inside of that are ways that parents can help their children with literacy. So if you've got the book, it'll say, um, go outside and look for bluebirds. We have the one with the bluebirds which we got from the book sale. Um, a guy in New York photographed a bluebird's nest from his balcony. And so it's all about the bluebirds. So it'll tell you that you can go out and then it'll also tell you have the children count something in the book. And then it explains a whole lot to the parents. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's more than just a book. It's how to relate with your child, how to get them interested in books and how to read to a child they're awesome i'm always like oh there's another one you're, you're really you like the ones that you've seen oh yeah oh yeah i mean i was pretty amazed when yeah. i was reading it. I, i'd never heard of it and i was reading the website and i thought some of them are impressive. um super and old Eric classics Eric like, knows about them and he's yeah yeah big fan I, yeah. <laughs> I was really impressed with the books for 2023. Yeah, it was across um, the board. Yeah, I think it could have a dramatic impact in general on the community. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the other thing I really liked about it is it's up to the parents. You know, we can obviously promote it, but it is up to the parents to put their children's information mm -hmm. into that database. And then um, and it's, it's their choice to do that. It's, mm -hmm. And it's not something that we're doing on their behalf. No, it's. But if we can afford it and we can fund it, I think it would be a great way to spend money. And something that we could also ask, um, you know, add to that wish list with the friends. You know, maybe something they'd be very interested in supporting as well. It originally, one of the original um, comments that came was from the friends and they, you know, they at first were interested and we kind of discussed it back and forth. Um, so. It, we may that we may be able to see if they are interested in adding onto the wish list with a certain amount of tools they have. Or maybe somewhere in the interact and get them to help out, you know, sponsored by. And because on the book, on the address label, it says who mm -hmm. sponsored that. Because the ones that come through here are always saying United Way. So this would say uh, White Lake Library was the one okay. who paid, who pays for it is yeah. written on there, who pays, you know, the postage as April said. Thank you, Karen. I, I work that thing and I see all sorts of books. You do? Yeah, we get a lot of them in. People definitely bring them in to be resold for somebody else. Once their kids outgrow them, awesome. they come in for resale. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so that finishes up our uh, services charges that way. And moving on to capital help. Again, with the overdrive, real simple. Uh, it's, it's all, that would be all content now. So you okay. should be able to have uh, stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll want digital. Is someone an audiobook fan? I think that's great. <laughs> um, Hoopla, we have a little less usage on that, so just a small decrease of a thousand dollars to uh, see how that goes. Online resources, slight increase in this. 
You can see some of the databases that it covers. Do we know on, on these how much they're used? We do. we do. Okay. I'd be interested uh, uh, to like kind of know. These online resources. We know how much that's being used, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have all numbers for all these. Reports are still used. What? I'm always curious if to find out how much consumer reports is still used. Um, I actually do use it. I haven't um, been able to get into it on, on mine. When I've tried to log in, um, it what did it, do to you, Karen? it just won't let me in, so I'm not sure. That's I'll have to go to adult services <laughs> and ask a question so they can make a tick mark. <laughs> I can tell you from a personal experience uh, with consumer reports. Um, at, at my previous position, we had we paid for consumer reports, uh, the online version, and then we decided, oh, you know what, usage is so so, you know, and it was coming through. Um, I believe it was through Mel. You could get a version mm -hmm. through Mount. Oh boy, no, 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 not the same at mm -hmm. all. And we heard about it from patrons. This is terrible. Go back to the old way. And so we, we went right back to, to mm -hmm. because it was just <coughs> what's provided by Consumer Reports is, is really good. Okay, let's talk books. Oh, so dorky. adult books. Uh, this fund is increase accommodates unfortunately an overall inflation for print books. Mm -hmm. Prices previously ranged in the 24 to 28 range are now coming in at $30, $32 or more uh, for mm -hmm. fiction and obviously even more for nonfiction. So, and it also will include an initial bump to fill in our adult graphic novel collection. Uh, one thing that's going to happen pretty soon is right now adult graphic novels are within the nonfiction collection and they're going to be moved to the end, which is where like the study rooms are and have their own section so that they're going to be easier to find. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can start to bump that up a little bit because there's obviously interest. Yeah, because unless you know what you're looking for, you don't, you can't, as you know, like I was going through the shelves and I found one in the middle of wherever. And I was like, oh, that's very interesting. Whereas if it had been over in its own area, it'd um, be more, you know. Yeah, the Bexley Library in Ohio moved their adult graphic novel collection from the regular general fiction collection into its own section. And then suddenly they started buying like three times as much. Because suddenly because they're the going readership up. readership was way up. Yeah. 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 It's, it's got to be seen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It's similar to large print. Mm -hmm. You know, if large print was just within the thing, you'd have a harder time finding something to read if you're looking for large print. And that's kind of in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so large print um, <laughs> Speaking <of> mouth, <laughs> seems to be working. So no change there. Young adult, small increase to accommodate uh, new and replacement costs. Mm -hmm. Children, same thing, uh, and to fill in some gaps. So uh, uh, Mallory has done a great job with looking through these and doing some relabeling and checking to see what ones in series that we have or don't have, so that we're just filling in some of those. Mm -hmm. And keeping up with, again, with our new parenting and our workbooks. Our workbooks are, are quite popular. Mm -hmm. Periodicals, again, okay to stay the same. AV audiobooks, uh, I, I hear from all other libraries, they're not circulating as a bit like they used to. And we know part of that is because newer cars, obviously, I don't, I don't even have a CD player in that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's, yes. And if you right. can get it on Hoopla or Overdrive, then, you know. Right. And um, we have patrons that have been in here and have complained, you know, because, oh, well, I, I, I know a person that actually comes in here and takes out like 20. And then they mail them back after and when they get to Florida. <laughs> um, yes. And I tried to show them how to use Hoopla and Overdrive. Luckily, Maria stepped in and helped some more. Um, and the person said, okay. And this year, I think they only took 10. <laughs> <laughs> but then they put, them, they put them in a box and mail them back. I'm like, <clears throat> and every one that they checked out the year before, I went through and every one of them was on overdrive. 
Mm. It reminds me years ago when we when there was the switch from audio cassettes. Oh to yes. To CD. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there are people that still want to use them. It's just takes. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it's that slow. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, libraries are trying to get rid of playaways. Oh yeah, so, I try to get rid of what playaways, play the, the self-contained. <laughs> I love playaways. Yeah. Playaways are great, except there nobody uses them. Anymore. Yeah, you know what? They work really well if you are on a very long bike ride. Yes, which right. the rest of it doesn't. Be. So yeah, I've listened to all sorts of things on some very long haul rides. Yeah, I had one of the C, uh, you know, portable CD player. Plugged it in there with a cassette adapter to <laughs> that that transition to, to, to discs. From, yeah. From the, yeah, I'm like you, Rich. I have to admit, when my first when my first card that had did not have the CD player, I immediately bought a CD player because I was an audio yep. person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, final man will come back, so maybe audio books will too. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. never know. Cassette yeah, tapes, yeah. right? Um, you'll notice that you know we give them to the friends, and they're actually putting them up for free because yeah. they're just not being um, purchased. I think that we're doing really well with the friends. If we we start, they start at a dollar, and then like day two, they'll wrap a bunch of them together and be like five dollars mm -hmm. for like ten, and then they sell them for fifty, and then they'll sell them for, for like a <laughs> quarter, and yeah, that's when they, that's when they get them. Off. Um, Amy, young adult. Uh, so this budget covers movies, small amount of audiobooks, and some video games. And we have had a lot. Of, we did kind of a little little mini survey, and we're asked for some things that uh, both in youth and young adult video games that we didn't have. So we want to make Good. sure we accommodate them. And those only go out to our White Lake residents. Mm -hmm. um, so small increase there. Do you keep those like behind the counter, or do you? Yeah, you a lot, a lot of libraries have moved to putting the discs in a separate folder somewhere. Right. I, I think brand new is. ones you definitely have to go to the thing. I think for the I think we go to the counter to get games. Oh, I think so. Toledo yeah. would do it entirely if they said it was they were donations to the youth of Toledo. Is <laughs> <laughs> one thing. <laughs> they would check them out once they come in with a card, get a card. How long do they, they never check out again. for? Yeah. Yeah, see, I think that needs to be longer because once a kid is like into a game yeah. and it's, you know, they're trying to get through it and then the week ends. And... Interesting thing about that, though, is that if you keep it for longer, more well, if you have damage. Oh. What'd you say, Eric? If you, keep a, if you keep a game longer than seven days, there's some statistics that show that they're more likely to come back damaged. Really? Yeah. Because kids throw them around, they take them out, they drop mm -hmm. them on the table, they leave them there. Well, you come up with Dorito hands. Yes. <laughs> and you also have to make sure not to buy the ones that come out with like a separate little bonus thing, whatever those are, whether they're you know SD cards that have additional content or special bonus codes that can only be used once. Oh. It's it's a whole nother game. Some experience with this. <laughs> it's its own collection. It is it has its own problem. Um, okay. Um, same with youth, maybe, like I said. Mm -hmm. Okay, grant expenditures. Um, so that I think just is a fair thing. I put it, uh, I said 2,000 and we received a $3,000 grant this year. <laughs> um, so. Is that what we applied for? We applied for it as a Dollar General grant okay. for the um, Tablets. Did we apply for any we didn't get? Did you? Did we ever apply for the one that I had told you about in, in January? After the after tools back. one? Or the, well, somebody else used it for tools. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lacrosse library. Oh, they it used was, it for tools. They received fifty thousand dollars the next. Right. Yeah, I'll have to back and look. I have because I didn't hear anything more document. about it. Yeah. They were really surprised. They thought it was very easy grant to fill out. And it was fifty thousand dollars, and they and then they started their whole um, tools. Mm. You know, like you can you can get about any kind of tool imaginable through. Was it a website library. or what was it? Um, I have to go back and look. I sent the APR yeah, information. Okay. I sent it back in like no, last December yeah. um, because I'd been in, in talking to the library director at um, the Cross Library when I was with my father-in-law. She was all excited because they. 
just bought all their tools, all the Black and Decker tools that come in. And, <laughs> and, and, and Black and Decker then also gave them a huge discount. But I mean, really, it, it was a phenomenal. They have a tool crew that looks like Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it was, for some reason, I think it was related to how they did it, it was related to seniors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I remember giving you information about yeah, it. You, got, you have a certain window that you have to apply for it, but they felt that it was a really easy one to earn. Okay. Uh, gift fund purchases. So this is, you're seeing uh, friends, donations, gifts, memorial funds. Um, just an easy way to, so when receipts come in, staff purchase something that is, say, on a friend's wish list, then it's easy to have that fund, too. Um, that was here when I came here. I really liked it, so I mm -hmm. thought, you know what? I definitely like that. I'm going to keep that. It makes sense to, to connect them, but for um, doing things like, okay, you know, if they use the funds toward a program, it wouldn't be a capital outlay. Yeah, and, you, and you're saying exactly what Joe said, because I said, yeah. are we still good to do that? Because I didn't do it last year, and I thought, well, I'd really like to do it this year. And he goes, well, um, so they kind of, like, you can start that way, then you could do, what keep a list of budget amendments and then move it. Okay. Um, that's another way of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. There's some things like that this year that I have a list that I, I'll be bringing to you probably in November to mm -hmm. say, okay, we need to move this to this, this amount mm -hmm. of amendment. Yeah, that's good. So... Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I did. I said that to them. I said it's comfortable when you're doing it, but I understand the. Yeah, it's kind of a well. So it's good to yeah. to match. Okay, we spent this much on capital, this much on you know yeah. services out there. I think it's you know I think it's important to track both because the the capital things are things that would have like ongoing value. Right. There versus if you bought a computer, you know, it, yeah, that'd be a capital. But if you bought a a um, you know, paper program, it's a it's an experience <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that yes. we're buying rather than capital. Okay. So furniture and fixtures. Uh, okay, we need some clocks. <laughs> I, I mean, some clocks, yes. we really do. I, there's yeah, just, I, I sit around the whole time, and then I uh, yeah, here it's okay. This is great here. Yeah. But in most rooms, I'm yeah. where I, I mm -hmm. don't know what time uh, I would just like to make sure they match. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't need to match these. These are, yeah. these are donated. But if we buy some, I'd like them all to match and kind of harmonize with the big one that's supposed to be going in over the fireplace. So, when is that? supposedly happening do we know not exactly okay <laughs> but soon oh okay. like but i would say within the next six weeks soon oh so like an early christmas present perhaps okay <laughs> so if we if we do get multiple clocks um can we it, can we, you get some that are like uh synced yeah that was yeah there's by some clock, kind of atomic, radio atomic. like a wi-fi kind of sync yeah. thing right yeah they they definitely have that. You know, okay. They have an NTP server. Yeah. So you don't they need to climb yes. the ladder to, yeah. to put yeah. the clocks I just, at well, the same it's, time. It's just like, you know, this but clock then, says it's 103. This clock says it's 107. This clock says it's... This clock you know, says it's 1230. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. proverb that says the man with one watch always knows what time it is. The man with two is never sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, but I mean, I know you can phone. hook into yeah, the exactly. atomic yeah. clock. But that may be more than we want to pay for. I don't know, but I do know that there no, are clocks that you, you can, can do that. Um, and Mike should know how to do this. Do we use Windows here? The group I worked in at um, AT T, we did time for all of our customers. No AT T. Um, and we, there, it's, there's a satellite synchronization across the world. So Mike should know how to set us up for that, right? They're just internet time servers. So it'll always be accurate. Yeah. Like our phones are. 
right? But um, if we're using windows here, well, those, those clocks aren't going to have windows on them. Though. No, no. <laughs> they're not going to, but if they're internet, they have to, they're going to have to be internet. Wi-Fi connected, right? Yeah, that would right. be the, and they have that to. might be, that might be cost prohibitive, yeah. But, uh, yeah um, there's some free configs out there, like worldtimeserver.com. Mike should know how to do that for us. Yeah, no, no but the, the equipment, you know, the, uh, um, National Time and Signal, which does our alarm stuff also does. Yeah, they should pro they yeah. probably, they have some do, nice, they probably do atomic clocks. And yeah, they do that. Okay. Yeah, but if we're spending five hundred dollars for phone versus five dollars for phone, you know, it's a, right. probably have a little bit more sense of. We don't know, use it at, at church. I noticed. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, like they have a master plan system. Yeah, yeah. Never right. Internet time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. So. Um, so are we looking at putting the donor tree in next year? Yeah. Okay. It's in the budget. Great. So yeah, I'm going to send it such as the donor tree. Um, you should also install an additional countertop and cabinets in the idea lab to provide room for more technology. That amount is just a placeholder. Okay. Um, it could be more, it could be less. And it provides more prominent area for things such as 3D printer, our future space for like a laser engraver. So we were talking, um, um, Jake, about putting that 3D printer mm -hmm. up against the window so people could see it running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome. Well, I think we you discussed it before last year when we were in finance. Yeah. 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 We yeah. brought it up and I thought, yeah, we need to make sure we do that. So yes. that people can see it, okay. because um, I actually brought it up to somebody this weekend. They were just, oh, it was Jesse. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely geeked about it. Yeah. He's like, I walked into a library and I saw somebody using the 3D printer. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can walk into yeah. your public library where you live. And he went right out there on time and was like, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're very yeah. geeked about it. No, it's it's a big hook for sure. I remember when I was in college, the library added a uh, three, three printer, and there was a line like the day it opened for people to just go and watch. Just watch. Right. Just just the ability to watch it is yeah. kind of a big deal. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm excited about because it's in it's in a, it's in a casing, and you can look and see. Um, it's a little the key, the front's a little dark, but you can still, you can still see in there and see it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna make a video, a uh, bookish banter video, mm -hmm. and um, do something fun with that. So, so we're gonna put those cabinets in there so it's stabilized. It's really mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. I think yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna yes. be a big hook, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The scanner that we're looking at actually has two options where you can set something down and it'll scan it, and also is handheld. So mm -hmm. I think the cutest thing I saw when we were looking at which ones to purchase was it showed them scanning a little kid's head and then they took the little piece and they put it on like a game piece. Oh. So it was that <laughs> yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the whole chess board of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine playing Candyland with your own self? Oh, with yeah. your own okay. self? You know, I She's mean, that there. could... Uh, a life-size Candyland game that they play, and then they make their game piece, piece for home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Make yeah. your own. Yeah. I, I remember the Wii Me. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. oh my gosh. Okay. 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 So, so yeah. that's All right. Um, equipment. We need to continue, obviously. Yep. Computers. We just had one die, so we had extra. Um, <laughs> replace computers, four by 14, four five laptops. And we need, we need to replace our current InvisionWare server. And we also want to add a little bit of hard drive for file storage on that one. Uh, and then here's what I'm talking about. So one of the things I'm talking about, interior, exterior camera expansion. We have blind spots. And so we took a look at that and had someone come out and there's a possibility for 10 extra cameras inside and out. Uh, so including installation, that's the cost for that. Mm -hmm. And to address, uh, Mike did mention that 
because she wanted to have a way for staff in the back circulation room to see who was at the back door. So just oh kind yeah, of, whoever was it ringing the buzzer. Right. Who so is we it? We're kind of like, oh, no. and then we just talked it through. Actually, just recently, and we figured out that even with our current stuff, we could take a monitor and mount it in the back area and actually have several views, not just that. Um, mm -hmm. one, but we will, if we add some of these cameras, we'd be able to have to drive a window so we could see even before the bell rang if someone drove up um, or somewhere other areas. Uh, so that was a great idea. And with brainstorming, we were able to do that now. So we're going, we've got a mounting thing where we've got a monitor and we're going to put that up probably next week. Nice. So that was good on that. So yeah, that's where we're <laughs> suggesting the 10 cameras added. Um, Who and, does that cameras? ADT. Oh. <laughs> yes. it again. <laughs> uh, okay, so that is that. Yeah, it's really important. <laughs> Lastly, building and improvements. We'd like to add the following to improve the building. Mm -hmm. um, this came up, FOB access came up last year, and when we were talking about different safety ways of installing the night lock system. And, so we looked into that eight doors. It may not be eight doors, actually. Uh, eight doors include these doors. Um, and we may not have to have those doors, or it may be more difficult because they're double to do that. Um, so it may actually wind up only being six, but which would bring the cost down a little bit. Okay. Adding acoustic tiles to the ideal lab. So you're talking, yes, yeah. just going to have a little, little right. button. Yeah, that we would start. Mm -hmm. Not swipe as in swipe, but like just touch tap, it. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. And then you'd be able to. I think that's what I have right now. <laughs> like this. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we currently have that for the staff door. Yeah. So it would expand it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The back one. Uh -huh. um, yeah. It's not what it says right now. I'm just wondering what the difference is between that and just. Okay. No, no, no. I think it's really, I think it's very important to be able to get into the building with that kind of easy access. I think it's really important, you know, for staff, especially if they feel like for some reason they're coming in here and they're on their own and they feel like they're uncomfortable because somebody else might be around. It's, it's an easy way to walk in the door and close the door behind them. But I'm just wondering, I don't know what the difference, I don't know what the price difference is. Most places that I've worked in in the last 10 years, it's all hand. I don't know if it, this is through ADT. I don't know if ADT offers that. I don't know. I don't know. That I just don't know what the price difference would be. And we can investigate. And some of these are just placeholders. Mm -hmm. and just you always see. have your hand with you. You don't always have your phone. Yeah. I just don't know what the price difference is, if it would be worth it. But then we also know who's really walking through the door. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, with, with the, the hand, you know, the, the hand right now, hand. yeah, with the staff on, yeah. we, we know who's coming in at what time they come in each day. Yeah, um, but somebody else, so my point is, is that somebody dropped it, right? Right. Mm. Yeah. That's my point. I can, I can investigate. I mean, yeah, I, you have to ask ADT if they even offer it. Yeah. I remember it actually not being that expensive. Is this something that you would want to need to do before the next time we address this? Or are you just saying? No, oh, I mean, if, if it's if it's the same kind of cost, it doesn't really okay. matter. But it, and it might be a lot more. It might not be, right? I just think it's something to look at. Okay. I think it's just an added measure of security. Um, next, acoustic tiles in the ideal lab. If you sat in there for anything, you do realize that. Mm -hmm. Spin, yeah, for sure. It, it's something that was in the original plans and was taken out for cost uh, conti uh, containment and put on the list to monitor. So we've monitored it. And it's loud. <laughs> so, so, but we did have some quotes, but I mean, they would be like six years old by now. Right. So but yeah. that's, those are the kind of things that maybe we would use for, um, 
you know, when friends don't make those kind of things that we had originally planned on using in um, the library mm -hmm. and that we got to the point um, as we're building the library, we realized that we had to cut this, cut that, we had mm -hmm. to stay within budget. Those kind, and I don't know what that list is of what mm -hmm. we're missing, Yeah, but I think that, um, you know, the comment from Liz Smith that she sent us um, was very valid. Mm -hmm. that giving these, these wonderful donations from the friends. We look at um, these gifts and see what we could afford from the list of things that we didn't accomplish when we originally designed that library. It's been a few years since we looked, but mm -hmm. the pricing on the portico was... It was $130,000 last time we looked. That's a lot. Uh, I think... I, it was, then we, I, it was, that I was what it was going to cost. I thought we asked them to, I thought we asked Steve if he could do something for us that was not $130,000. Mm -hmm. Was that his name from the A2E? Um, yeah, no, no. I think it was more than, I think it was a, that we saved like one hundred and fifty, and not doing it, and then we came back, and it was close to four hundred thousand. I thought. For the, oh, I don't remember that. The, that would be horrible. Okay. It, it was. It, it was, was a lot it, more. It was yeah. double. Yeah, yeah, it was. He's right. Like, yeah, they. You know, can you give us the new estimate? And the new estimate came in, and it was ridiculous because well, it maybe hadn't the, been maybe the one thirty was lines. the cheaper, uh, the cheaper version. Because I do remember asking him for a cheaper version. Mm -hmm. That may have been, yeah, which was, yeah. Okay. Okay. But there has to be other things that aren't $250,000. Yeah. It was, yeah. We, it was mm -hmm. ridiculous. It had only been like a year, year and a half yeah. or something like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, we yeah. also do have on the strategic plan to be looking at calculating out costs for replacement things already, mm -hmm. such as, you know, what it's going to cost for a new roof or a new HVAC. Yeah, I mean, we need to, I, I know we talked about making a committee to do that. Mm -hmm. I would like to use uh, volunteers to help staff that because we can't be on every committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't think it needs to be a monthly meeting either. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're talking once about order or the something that have that kind of, that kind of background. Mm -hmm. Like I asked, Glenn, if he would be interested because he has financial background and stuff like that and he's out of town half the year so he may not be the best person but i just saw him and yeah he's it, going out of town yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh you know anybody who just has an interest in that and if it's not a lot of time like every other month or once a quarter or whatever mm -hmm. it's it may be uh where other stuff could be handled you know just uh, you know uh, either zoom calls or you know once in a while so I was just thinking that we need to make that committee to do that. And I guess we can tie it to the strategic plan because we talked about uh, having a, a group to look at that. Yeah, it's really um, important. Yeah. I mean, so like maybe one board member and three or four mm -hmm. or five, yeah. you know, ambassadors right. mm -hmm. or volunteers or whatever mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, we have we have money that we have set aside that are in the CDs and stuff. But, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I think that it's important that we, you know, look at how we spend that money in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it needs to be. I mean, the building isn't going to get any younger, and there's going to be things that need to be done. Yeah. All right. So there is not a line item to adjourn on the agenda, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll want to do that. Just well, before we do, I need to know directives, do you want me to bring this to the next meeting? And what, there was just a few minor changes. So how do you, what are, what are you? There were very few changes. Yeah. If we wanted to vote tonight, can we do that? It's not on the, it's not on the agenda. Like as yeah, amended? Yeah, well, it's got review. review yeah. So yeah. we could go from review to. Implement. How does everybody feel about that? Anybody have something they want to add? I, I just want to add that I think that um, going through line by line is phenomenal. And I think April, you've done a fabulous job. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you. The narrative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I read this online, I was like, oh, now I understand That's everything. Really nice. I yeah. really love what I do with this. I love doing this. It's really helpful for the more to actually know what we're yeah. doing with the money. Thank you yeah. for adding yeah. those.
pricing in yeah. on the no, narrative. That was very helpful. Yeah, and thank you to the finance committee. Yes. It was so nice being able to just like show you guys this uh, throughout the year and say, what do you think? And to, to get that feedback. So thank you so much. It did make today much easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, and the conversations that we've had throughout the year have been really helpful. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. My, my and only been great, Jake. Sort of, you know, stepping, stepping back, my thing I don't feel like I have a really good grasp on, and maybe I drifted off or something here, but the well, nudge um, more frequently. What so we use it where we're taking um, 170 or 179,000 from the um, fund balance. And where are we using it? And I can bring that back to you. So maybe that's something you want me to kind of. Like I think that's out. a good idea. Because <laughs> that's a very good idea. Because these are the these are the like the dollars for the for the new roof. That's kind of what the fund balance is. Those long term, mm -hmm. you know, uh, types of things. You know, versus. I don't want to say we frit you know, with it. You don't want to fritter it away. You know, the, right. you know. It's thousand dollars for hoopla. Here's a you know, it's a, and mm -hmm. you know, and uh, oh, you know, we got we need a new roof, and we can only afford half a roof, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because, like you said yeah. earlier, Rich, that fund balance is really used for capital improvements and, and, and things yeah. okay, like the, maybe the cameras, right? Yeah, and, and, and things and things like that. Like, I know before we looked at it, it was for the um, the drive. The drive up, and, and we used it for style this year. She did plan, and it was, yes, yeah, yeah the, based on what, um, you know, when I looked at 2022, I just kind of you had a lot of turnover, I took a lot of turnover because we hadn't gotten to stuff, mm -hmm. um, and so I took a lot of from 2022, which was strategic planning, mm -hmm. the bathroom tiling, um. What else did it have? Um, some other things, but a lot of it looked to be were like building and I think strategic plan was one of the only ones that was more of a service yeah, yeah, yeah. than anything else. So I kind of look at it as being a lot of the building and improvement equipment, furniture fixtures is what I would start with there and look to that, mm -hmm. which 50, 65. Yeah, it's it's almost pretty close to that, give or take a few fill-in dollars. Yeah. And, and with that, um, we should also, you know, what is the, we have this here, the, what is the fund balance? And what is it, you know, what, what are we, you know, so what does this do to it? Yeah. You want me to come back with a separate spreadsheet on fund balance usage? Uh, that would probably, that would mm -hmm. probably be the, Think it'd be yeah. great. Okay. Do we need that before we approve everything? Absolutely. Or is it just to tie the bow? Okay. No, I think that I think that, that we that we need to do that. And then we can then we can vote. Yeah. And can we vote with only five, well, four trustees? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as we have a quorum, we can vote. Okay. Can we plan to have a quorum next week? I know. I will. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. Maybe. I'm T B D. Uh oh. I'd say 50-50. Yeah. Did you one, say two, Eric? Three, you were not. Yeah, there's a very slim chance I might be here, but no. Yeah. So I thought your note said you weren't. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I come, I come back at night. Yeah. So, oh, so, so we I have make it back. Four yeses and one maybe. Right now, airport. Oh, without Jake, you can't do it because I can't vote. No, no. You no, no, just need a quorum. You have a quorum. Is First at least one. four members. Right. Yeah. So we oh, okay. yeah. needed four voting. No. Yeah. Okay. No. We've had many where it was three yes votes, and that's what we had here. Okay. Yeah. I remember because um, I typed it in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are good if we and have I've, four of us. Yeah. And I have to look. I know we already voted on what we're going to do with the monies that are coming off CDs um, in November. I don't remember. I don't, I think we have one coming off in December. So, you know, I'd like I to. I haven't been watching that. So. I, I do. And I just, I, I think that there's one. And I'd like to vote. I, I like voting a couple months in advance. Yeah. Because then we're not up against a wall. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, um, and I think, and I'm. 
I mean, my concern is, is is in November, December, not having um, direction. Not no, or not quorum. not having quorum in November, November, December. Um, so, but you can vote on financial, like paying bills. You can vote, and if we had to sell one or you take money from one and use it to pay bills, I think we can do that. Yeah. Even okay. if you don't have a quorum, well, you can pay bills. My only, my biggest concern is the, is the one I think I'd like to bring it to next week for the December one because then in January, we'll have tax money, and we will get some tax revenue in December. So then, if 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 we have um, if we have some that are coming up and they're due in January, if they get renewed, it's not going to be a really good deal. Mm -hmm. because we'll have tax revenue and then we can work on it. So that's my big concern is to make sure that we take care of anything that we have to do mm -hmm. um, in October because it seems like we did have one in November, December in the last couple of years since I've been here that we didn't have quorum and we didn't have a meeting. I don't remember ever not having a meeting. We had where we didn't have a meeting because of weather, and then we had to have oh, it was later. Was that what it was? Yeah, okay. yeah. we've had right. weather okay. yeah. that we've had. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, I remember not having a meeting. Yeah. yeah. A couple Maybe of them. February. Right? Yeah. Then we had a meeting. We definitely back. had times in the past where we, where we haven't had a quorum, yeah. and we've okay. just paid bills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, but if you're voting without well, you're me really next well. week. Yeah. Just know it non binding, obviously, it's the way to vote, but I, I support this as well uh, uh, with the caveat that we do need that broken out for that 178.9 yeah. as far as what that mm -hmm. is. But beyond that, I'm in full support of it. So that helps the rest of you okay. vote next week. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn at 828. Second. Second. <laughs> it's a race. All in favor? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, so we're done, Heather. April, I will come into the house tomorrow. Okay. okay.